This is Mario with MIA Microflight. You can see my name is on this particular 3D print uh, assembly. And this video is about the Anacubic i3 architecture. It's the pros and cons of remaining with the stock hot end enclosure or system. This doesn't have the hot end in, in there because it's uh, on the machine. I took this out to do these parts right here or go with this uh, uh, fully 3D printed uh, assembly here. This is my own design and I came up uh, with uh, uh, several iterations of this setup here by taking measurements of this plate right here. In fact, this is a 3D print plate of the original plate that's metal on the Anacubic i3. So this is part of the Anacubic i3, the cover and the uh, hot end uh, support. This is an L bracket that goes to the back and it's got provisions for the belt uh, uh, support as well. The belt is simply wrapped around those uh, tabs and uh, attached with tie wraps. That's how they do the anacubic, very simply and very effective. And so in this video I wanted to, um, like I said, talk about some of the pros and cons of this as I was, interestingly, as I was uh, doing, uh, trying to uh, trying to make this uh, better, the system better. I actually ended up uh, questioning my own design, even though it's very spiffy, very cool, and very um, also very effective. And I'll explain the pros and the cons of both. Let me start with this one, then I'll go back to this one because the, my train of thought when I did this design was to uh, I wanted to incorporate some features on this uh, particular design here. As I said, have said in many uh, videos and comments posts that I have done over the years about the Anacubic architecture is I'm, 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 I'm solid uh, pro for the Anacubic architecture. I really like the uh, way they did the machine uh, the, as far as the uh, metal uh, structure that they used to hold uh, the servos, how they approached that, uh, uh, that uh, manufacturing and how they executed basically the, the whole machine. There are some things that because of costs I understand that they uh, they weren't they didn't go too deep into it, uh, such as uh, the cable uh, um, um, hold downs. Uh, you know they they, um, they use tie wraps, and so while that works fine, and you could do things better, you know there are more important things that uh, that one should concentrate on when or um, someone should should look at. At least when I was shopping for the uh, 3D printer, I was looking at the functionality of the printer and the things that were uh, a little more. Uh, more important. The touch uh, panel display on the Anacubic is something that drew, drew my attention at the time that I bought it because no other machine uh, had one and to me that plus the ar a clean architecture that uh, i3 has really caught my attention and I wasn't wrong in selecting that machine because the parts that you get are very nice parts as you can see here these are very nice uh, parts but you also have to treat the machine and it's uh, you know it's a combination of both you know the machine how well it's tweaked and how well you know your part is uh, designed and sliced. All those things play into the final result of the uh, 3D print. But overall, for the price that these uh, machines were going for at that time, I think it was about $400 for a 90 cubic. Uh, the, this is back when they first re were released, the i3 Mega, and then uh, they have been dropping in price as new machines and new technology has been uh, coming out. So. But this is the i3, the standard i3 uh, architecture. And you will find this uh, the same setup on the i3 Mega as well as the i3 uh, S, I believe. I don't have the S, but it's basically the same the same uh, components. So in uh, in my uh, attempt to uh, in my attempt to do a uh, much better system from a both functional and aesthetical point of view than the original stock uh, uh, enclosure here on the Anacubic. Um, I ended up actually discovering many of the pluses that this system has over something like this. But this also has many pluses, or some pluses, uh, as opposed or compared to this uh, system here. So let me talk about the, the main things that got me started in, in making my own 3D print uh, assembly here. I wanted to bring the cable system um, from the front of the machine to the back as I thought it was more logical because if you look at the cable, the way the uh, machines uh, are assembled, the cables come from the back and they wrap around and this front cable 
um, was bothering me in the front in front of the filament um, um, cable or the filament filament guide, which is the Bowden tube. So that was bothering me, uh, and so I decided uh, why not bring the cable to the back. One one thing, the other thing was the uh, <clears throat> the cooling the part cooling fan which sits on the on the left hand side is is viewed from this uh, point here. That uh, I felt that uh, that one has a, a little slot that they uh, uh, that is done on this um, additional part that you attach the fan to and then you hook that to the side of the cover here. So that has like a little um, duct uh, work that is uh, like a little scoop that feeds only on one side of the the machine. And so I thought if we would have a symmetrical um, a part cooling uh, system that would be better for the part because you're cooling for you're cooling the part symmetrically on both sides or I even designed a round one you know to cool the part fully uh, encapsulate the, uh, the, the 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 cooling area on the part all the way around 360 degrees that was working with uh, with the stock setup and I did that as, a, as an add-on feature you know to this setup here but I decided why not just you know start from scratch and if I had to design this one from the bottom up, how would I do it? And so this is how I came up with this uh, the system that you're seeing here. So that was my my concern here, not not my concern, but my my desire. I wanted to uh, bring this cable to the back to clean this up a little bit and just have the bowden tube uh, with the filament that you'll come at the front here. Um, <clears throat> the second was the the fan on the side. This fan didn't bother me too much because that fan is still you know doing its uh, its job. I think uh, of, of just fine. And so. In that process, I ended up creating this part that you see here. To bring the fan to the back, I had to create this uh, this um, uh, this uh, pocket, uh, uh, this part that looks like a pocket, but it also has provisions, you know, to duct the airflow to the front of the um, enclosure here, and that's what these little tools are for. This is all 3D printed. Um, as I said earlier in the vi video, I had done several iterations of this because you don't arrive at something like this by you know just whipping it uh, you know first uh, first thought first try. So it takes a little you know it takes a little effort and uh, you got to go through the process of tweaking and tweaking until you uh, you get to the point. So I did several iterations. Where, you know mainly I you know I started with the basic layout and setup, and by my uh, the previous iteration to this one, you know the parts were still bulky. In, uh, in weight. So weight was my concern because the other thing that I was trying to do is uh, remain with the equal or less weight than this original setup. I mean uh, if you're going to uh, if you're going to make something as an upgrade or something better you know you have to improve on not only on the functionality but also on the uh, on some of these other things and its weight is very important on a machine like this and I will talk a little more on, on, on why why you need to keep this uh, super lightweight. Oh, and the other thing that I wanted to do is reuse the exact components is on this machine here. I don't want to go with uh, Natura fans, you know, but the, the typical thing that people do when they they try to upgrade these things, in fact, they create more weight and more complexity than what is really required. So I did this uh, system here, and you can see that these shapes right here are designed from the plate, the original metal plate. Now these parts, I believe, are Aluminum. This cover is definitely aluminum because I cannot get uh, magnets to stick to that. Another another idea was to do uh, a cover with magnets so that I can just pop it out without using the uh, 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 um, um, the screws. And so I, yeah, I noticed that uh, no magnet was sticking to this part, and, and I had drilled one, another one to put some internal lights in it, and it drilled like like butter, you know. So this part is aluminum, definitely aluminum. This part I believe is steel. It's more solid and it has a little more weight to it. So I came up with this system here, and, and if you can see, that geometry that you see here is based on this plate right here. So it's from the original anticubic that I developed all these uh, uh, all these shapes, and this is in line. Uh, if I can get my, my, my thing to stand up here, let me just take this. I'm working with one hand while I hold the camera with the other one. And so this is designed. This whole system is designed based on, based on this uh, profile of this uh, plate right here. So you can see it's got the same curvatures on the corner and it's got the same uh, dimensions width-wise. 
but of course it's got to have a little depth to mimic the connector plate or the area of the connector plate that's on the original stock uh, um, um, enclosure here. So that's where this comes from, and it's you know just by logical um, layout, just using the uh, some common sense design approach, you know, using the exact same parts and the profile of the plate. There's no need to make this more complex, you know. So I took that and I extruded these parts outward in my uh, CAD uh, program, and that's how I came up with this uh, particular shape. So that's based on the, that plate right there. In similar fashion, I did this this section right here, and let me pull these out. These just slip out. My earlier ones had screws you know, to hold these things, but I decided not to use screws so that I can easily take this out. As you see it there, they have a they have a uh, tongue and groove sort of a um, design here that allows these parts to slide, uh, and so it's easier to remove. So this part again is based on the profile of this part right here. And if we were to put that right next to that. You, know, you can see how everything just matches because it's got the same profile. It's got the same holes, the same profile. Okay, and so my original ones were actually the width, the width of this, uh, the same um, um, enclosure here, were the same building, were just as bulky as this one, and uh, you know, which is really not needed when you relocate some of these components you know to the back and like the fan and the connector the uh, connector board and the and the cable so you you basically free up a lot of room here by not including that fan in, at, at the front and so i didn't need the width here and i started uh minimizing uh some of that um, bulk and i that's so how i ended up with this very very uh very compact uh shape here the um Hot end simply attaches here with the existing um, aluminum uh, uh, clamp or the uh, that little collar that they provide you. So I didn't design a collar for this because it, you don't need to do that. I mean, you can reuse that, the same one from the machine, and it's better because it's aluminum, you know, it's metal. So that clamps right underneath here, and when this is fully assembled with the uh, hot end, it um, these uh, bottom uh, sections of the 3D print raises up from the nozzle end about two to three I believe millimeters in height and that is so that it clears the part obviously you need to do that to clear the part so this is already done you know that way uh, you can see this is also open at the back there's no need to you know add material here and that's the other thing that I did in this uh, later uh, this is my latest uh, version it was to um, minimize uh, build time, you know, 3D print and build time, but more so to minimize weight. I want to kill as much weight as possible without risking uh, structural rigidity on the part. And so that's how I started, you know, cutting here and there and just making uh, some of these uh, changes. This also you'll notice has slats here. My original one did not have slats and like, it was more boxy like that one. Um, and I did that to allow the front fan, the front, um, that fan right there, which feeds air through the side on the original one, is now at the front here. Uh, so that attaches to these four points here. There's four uh, sections there for the screws go, so the fan goes right there, and this cover right here right goes right over the fan. That's why this, this has perforations at the front. But since that fan is feeding air, uh, it's sucking air and feeding it to the uh, to the fins of the hot end, you know, the, the heat sink. It's got to go somewhere. You know, you can't just uh, enclose something and feed. Uh, you know, uh, put a fan in there. So it's got to have a, an intake, an air intake, and an outtake, an, an air out. So that's what these uh, holes are there for. Is to is this is getting cooled in the, at the at the top. It's also pushing that air outside to the sides of the uh, the plate here and it keeps things cooler and more efficiently running the fan at the rear so we're showing here this part connects right there via these uh, uh, circular ducts or tubing and I actually was able to improve the efficiency of this fan by I would say by maybe uh, 300 percent uh, and the reason I say that is because this fan 
on the original one has that little metal dot that has a, a little scoop and that little slot where the air is flowing is very small very uh, minimalistic and in in my opinion does not feed enough uh, does not have enough airflow to the part so that's something that I need to verify because I have not uh, I have not tested this particular one I have some other ones like I said the earlier ones are already running on some, some of my machines and they're working just fine but um, uh, but this particular one with the fan at the back with this particular duct uh, system is feeding a lot more efficient uh, the, the air and it's I mean it's almost like a jet here of air that I'm getting from these uh, scoops here from uh, fed from the back with a fan being mount, mounted that way and these uh, air scoop, um, air uh, out outputs going into the duct work and into the uh, feeding to the front of the uh, the part so it's working uh, extremely well uh, we'll see how that tests you know with uh, once this is on, on another machine I have uh, several of these machines the i3s because I really like these machines and you know I mean if you have one of these machines and you're honest about your uh, the type of work that these machines do you know you you'll know exactly where I'm coming from and I don't need to romance uh, too much you know the machine because the machines are, are good machines uh, I do have an issue with customer support but that's another that's another thing for another um, uh, video anyway so this is my whole setup right here uh, talking a little more about the um, this one right here has also a belt uh, where's that part I don't have that part uh, right here on this table but it has a belt uh, uh, clamp system you know to clamp the belts uh, in similar f fashion as this plate does you know how you bring the belts here right right around that but these are done with a peak uh, with um, tie wraps and this one is done with uh, screws and so that's what that part is and that it attaches to the back here and that part holds this assembly but it also holds at the top via uh, that spacer block in this clamp so the cable comes here, this is symmetrical by the way, the cable is directly center in uh, this uh, assembly here. I like symmetry and I like things uh, to be center. Uh, this one is a little bit off to the side, it's a little bit offset. As you can see this is a little bit offset to that side and I think they did that just to bring the cable a little bit away from the, from the tube here from the uh, bowling tube that uh, runs the filament so there's no need to do you know an offset at the back because the cable is already out of the way and so I went uh, with a more symmetrical and center uh, connector um, uh, support block this is what this part is and the cable just runs directly on top of it so when this is fully assembled and I left this open because th this has to go on the machine uh, although these parts can just uh, um, uh, be installed in, in saddle mount um, type uh, way from underneath the, uh, the gantry you can just slip this from underneath I decided to just leave it open until that point and so they go right there you know with uh, CA glue and this part right here attaches to the original bracket which is black on the original one it's metal and attaches to that point right there 